Hey y'all, I just got hired for my first project using the CNC, so I'm gonna get it set up and start building. I'm gonna be building a sign for a client I met on Facebook. He wants his house numbers and a Dallas Cowboys theme. After getting the CNC assembled, next I have to turn on the vacuum and the router. There it is running. Then I go over to my computer and press play on the file. Now the machine starts moving. It goes to its first location where it needs to cut. And then I start the cutting. Next I take the machine apart and I vacuum out all of the dust that's left over. Some of it I just uh, scraped out with an ice pick or an awl. And I cut out the tabs using my oscillating multi-tool and popped it out. You have a star! Next I disassembled the machine and pulled out my table saw and used it to cut the backdrop of my sign down to size. All that and I didn't press play, but I cut three quarters of an inch off one side and half inch off the other side. About 10 inches wide. Now it was time to cut it to length. I cut it to 26 inches. It was at this point I realized I needed to rip it down to 8 inches, so you get to watch me rip this time. Next I set up my laser engraver to cut out some 5mm hardboard. I once again used the table saw, this time to cut down the hardboard to a size that would fit on my laser engraver. If you've seen the Cowboys star logo, you know there's an inset little traced area that goes inside the star, so that is what I'm making here. Let's test if it fits. That doesn't look right. Why isn't it lining up properly? See if I turn it around in a circle, they'll line up. Nope. Nope, that didn't work. Turns out I uh, used a star logo from the internet that was lopsided. It was not straight, so had to do it again. And I did it again. And it takes about 50 passes to get it to cut out. And this one didn't even go all the way through. But this one was way too thick. So, it was even, but it was too skinny. So, third time to charge. And I cut it out again. It's thicker. And it lines up beautifully. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I was originally going to do the same thing as the thin part on the star with the numbers. But I decided to do it with the CNC, but it didn't turn out good. So I decided I was just going to paint it on, so. Yeah, it didn't work out, but on to the next. And what's next was putting a flush trim bit in my router and holding it in place with my vise. If you watch my videos before, then you might know that I have a router table, but it's kind of a pain to set up, so when I just have a few things to router, I like to go this route sometimes.
After cleaning up the tabs and the rough edges, it was time to trace out the pieces that would go behind the tips of the stars. I then cut out those traced pieces using my scroll saw. I cut them pretty far outside the line because I was planning on using the flush trim bit to cut them to the perfect length when the time came. I then used a file to sand back the parts that the flush trim bit couldn't reach. I then applied some sanding sealer to these MDF pieces to make it easier to sand. Once the sanding sealer dried, I sanded everything down using a couple emery boards and a handheld sander. When I was done sanding, I sprayed all of the pieces with a thin layer of primer. I was really hoping to be able to use the MDF for this project because it makes a better painting surface, but I know if any water got to it when it was hanging outside, it would be destroyed. After one layer of paint, I knew that I was going to have to abandon the MDF and use real wood. So the next day I picked up a 16 inch wide panel board from Home Depot and started cutting out my shapes again. This material is about a quarter of an inch thicker than the MDF I was using before, so I didn't cut it all the way through, I just left the settings the same, and then I cut it out using my circular saw and a scroll saw, and then used the flush trim bit on the router to get everything same length on the edges, so everything was nice and smooth. After cleaning up the inside corners with the chisel, I sanded everything down again. Next it was time to line up the star and attach the pieces underneath. I then glued the pieces together using wood glue and held the pieces in place while they dried using 23 gauge pin nails. I ended up having to recut this corner piece. It comes to a 45 degree angle underneath, so I made it a little difficult, but I finally got it. Now that the glue's dry, it's time to use my flush trim bit to trim off the proud edges. This went well for a while, but then it went bad. And it just started chipping off and breaking off all sorts of pieces. So then I had to do some emergency reconstructive surgery using my 23 gauge pin nailer and some wood glue. Once the glue dried for a second time, I busted out a couple of sanders and sanded it down using my belt sander, my disc sander on the same sander and then I used my random orbit sander. Once I got everything sanded even, I went back and filled in any of the gaps with some wood putty. After the wood putty dried, I then sanded that smooth. I then used a sanding drum on the Dremel to clean up some of the nail heads. Now that all the assembly and sanding is done, it's finally time for painting. I started by marking out where the lines would be because I'm going to have some stripes on this back piece and I used some 3 quarter inch wide tape to mark it off so that it could be the right width of my lines and then I painted with some cowboys gray and some cowboys blue to make these stripes. Then I painted the letters the cowboys blue to match. I actually started the painting before finishing the star so here I am putting the second coat on the backer board and on the numbers and then I will put the first coat on the star. It will also be Cowboys Blue. After the paint dried I peeled off the tape to reveal my lines. I then taped off the lines that I had already painted so that I could paint the opposite lines. I also taped off the numbers so that I could paint a border around them. I painted the border in white which is also the color I painted the other stripes and the 3D star. And after even more painting, it was time to take the tape off. Next we need to figure out the layout so we can get it glued together. I did a lot of measuring off camera to get everything centered properly, but I eventually got it figured out 
and now it's time to glue. I just used super glue and brad nails to hold it together, but I will go back later on and secure everything from the back using wood screws. Before putting on the sealer, I went back and touched everything up with a little paintbrush to get all the small imperfections cleaned up so that it looks awesome. I then put three coats of a spray on urethane sealer on the back. Once I was dry, I marked and drilled some holes and attached some screws to hold everything together really securely. I then attached the French cleat to the back so that it can be mounted. And after three coats of sealer on the front, the sign was completed. All right, I got it all done. I learned a lot on this build and I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. Bye.